My bag. I brought me some baggage. Maybe some of your baggage. Hallelujah. How many know you can put baggage on somebody else too? I'm going to give you all some of my baggage one because I don't want it anymore. Go back to verse 10. Verse 10. This morning we're preaching on... Caleb, are you recording? All right. In the name of Jesus. Verse 10. He said, and he said to them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. Not only the lading of the ship, the lading and the ship, but also our lives. Let's stop there. Church, Paul is, is a prisoner right now. He's headed on a ship to Rome and, and he's in a, they end up in a storm and they end up shipwrecked. How many have ever in life felt like you've ended up in a storm? Like it literally felt like there was wind all around, there was stuff all around, there was all kinds of things just happening all around. You're like, why is this happening to me? Right? Why am I, have, have you ever asked the question, Lord, why am I going through this? Thank you, brother. I, I, had, to, I had to choose Adrian. My baggage is heavy. How, how many know that, that sometimes when you're going through things, something's just, just come upon you. There may be an attack of the enemy. But sometimes it, it's a product of our own creation. Yeah. A, amen? amen? And I know that many of us don't want to hear that. You know, There's a lot of people that say, man, the devil's been beating me up this week, right? And be like, no, we, the devil's like, what? Why are you blaming me? You messed up. You know, I mean, receive it. Just that's say, that's for me. That's for me. Verse 10, Paul is warning a man of God, an apostle, is warning these men. I know now, I know he's a prisoner, but they know who he is. And he, he's a prisoner headed for Rome. And, and, and he tells, look, guys. About to get on the ship. Just going to let y'all know. There's a storm coming. There's some things that are that, that can possibly happen in your future. There's some things that, that you should be aware of. And, and I, I just want to let y'all know. It's probably not a good idea to leave. Right? When you hear a word. I got a question. Do you hear it? When a word comes from the pulpit, when you read the word in the Bible, when God gives you a warning, you, you feel that check in your spirit. Do we hear it? How many have, don't, don't raise your hand. Okay, please don't raise your hand. How many have, have almost done or about to do something that you know you're not supposed to do? Feel a check in your spirit and override it. It's the same thing that's happening right here. Paul is coming to them and saying, hey, there, there's something could happen. You, you, you should be aware that not only the ship and not only the lading, but also our lives are in danger if you go down this road, if you launch from this ship. And so many times the Word of God is coming forth to you and to me and through Scripture and, and even audibly, and He speaks into your spirit and He's like, whoa, stop. Don't do that. There's so many people say, well, if you love me, you won't, you know, you won't. Tell me like that. Look, if you're headed toward a cliff, I'm like, hey, love you so much. As you're going oh, get to the cliff. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be like, ah, stop. Go on. Oh. Right? <laughs> and it might not be pretty, and it might not be kind, and, and it might be just a little bit off of the way I said it, but sometimes you need to read the intention as opposed to my delivery. Right? right? My delivery isn't always perfect. But there's a warning coming forth. And sometimes God sets an alarm and says, Hey, I need to sound the alarm. You're headed. And then the thing about it is that sometimes when you're headed toward a storm, you don't know it. Sometimes when you're headed toward calamity, you don't know it. Right? You, you, ever, you ever come upon... I, I remember coming upon some big accidents and I had delays that morning. And I thought... Yeah, if I wouldn't have that delay, that would have been me. And you, you wouldn't have saw it coming. You wouldn't have saw what was happening. 
But that could have been you. And sometimes the Lord, His hand is upon you. He's warning you. He's sounding a trumpet. He's sounding an alarm. He's, he's putting things in your way so that you don't go there. And we still like, I want what I want, what I want, what I want. And the Lord pressed upon me to preach this to you. That, that when you hear the word and when you hear a warning, do you evaluate yourself? Do you do a self-examination and say, so let's just say a, a word comes forth and it's like, ouch, right? Do you go, it's for you. And you, and you know, my wife did a, a play a long time ago. She goes, and, and this was a comedic play and she wrote it down. She says, I wrote a list of sins that all y'all need to repent for, right? <laughs> you, if you have a list of sins that everybody else has to repent for, this might be for you. Okay. When the word comes forth and a warning comes forth, the word of God comes forth. Do you, do you internalize that? Do you say, search me, O oh Lord? I, I don't think I need that, but if I need that, I want that. I don't think I need to be checked there, but if, if, there, if you see something that, that I'm blinded by my religion or blinded by my pride or blinded by my selfishness or just simply blinded, Lord, show me. Do, do you approach every word of, that comes out of this pulpit or out of a preached word or out of the Bible, do you approach everything like, search me, O oh Lord? Is that our hearts cry, Lord God, whatever is in me, take it. I don't want let there be less of me and more of you. Amen. Amen. Do you evaluate yourself? Do you ask God to search and reveal and expose all that the warning addresses? And if so, do you respond with repentance and change? Because so many times the word of God comes forth and God addresses it and you recognize it. You say, that's for me. You're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then you leave church and you're like, whew, that was close. <laughs> and we get back to me, right? And God is like, well, hey, I called you to change. I showed you what I showed you for repentance. I showed you what I showed you so that I could grow you, so that I could mature you, so that I could increase you. Not so that you could question everything. I've got a neighbor. Love him. But he has a lot, a lot of questions. And because those questions aren't answered, um, he's not all the way in. He wants all his questions answered first. Right? We have to have some conversations. And I'm believing that by faith, and his faith increases so that he can, he can start that walk. When he doesn't know, it's a, it's a leap of faith. It's a step of faith. Amen? Amen. But we want to respond with repentance. And that's not a word that's used in a lot of churches today. Or if it's used, it's used flippantly. It's used as, as a part of a scripture like Acts 2.38. And they, they just say it, but the, there's no application for it. They continue to be mean. They continue to be evil. They continue to gossip and be judgmental. And they continue in sin. And, and then God is calling us to repentance and change. And the word comes forth. And what happens? We stay who we are. Hard-headed. Hard-hearted. Stiff-necked. And God's calling us to change. Amen. 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 And, and this, I, I'm not going to apologize. I, I'm, I'm going to deliver the word according to what he has put on my heart. And, and some of us need to hear it. And it might sound a little rough, but it's coming out of love. Amen. 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 I don't want you to find yourself in a storm. And sometimes if you'll just hear the word of the Lord, if you'll just hear the man of God, if they would have just listened to Paul, what would have happened? They would have found themselves in a storm. They would have lost the ship. They wouldn't have had to have to throw off the, off the baggage and all the lading and all the things in the ship. They wouldn't have had to do that because they would have almost died if they would have just listened to the word of God or to, to the man of God or be led by the spirit. If they would have just listened. If you find yourself in a storm this morning, it could be that you're not listening, that you're not heeding the warning. Amen. And then verse 11 says, here, here's another reason why you might find yourself in a storm. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than the things that were spoken by Paul. So, so a lot of us, uh, you, you believe the master and the owner of the ship. What, they, what he did was like, okay, so this master and owner of the ship, he knows what he's doing. Right? Logically, 
Paul, you know, you're the Pharisee of the Pharisees. You just sat under the, the feet of Gamaliel and you studied and studied and studied. What do you know about piloting a ship, being a captain? What do you know about it? And what, what, what ends up happening is how many, how many, there's a lot of logical people, a lot of uh, studious people that, that, that struggle with faith. That struggle with uh, when they don't completely see it all. And so what they'll do is, is they listen to logic, they listen to education instead of listening to the spirit. Have you, have you ever had the Spirit tell you to do something that contradicts what understanding? You, you know what I'm talking about? Like, for example, um, you, you might go to the doctor. You might take some medication. You might do all these things. And then the last thing you say is, all we can do now is pray. Right? When at first, if you'll just have been led by the Spirit and prayed first, you wouldn't have had to go to the doctor. You wouldn't have had to go get that prescription. You wouldn't have had to go through this many uh, physical treatments. I'm not, again, I'm not speaking against that. You, you, that's needed. But but first, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seek first looking out for God first. These, these things that, that God is calling to. Sometimes you're listening to logic and you're listening to tradition and you're listening to what, what just is normal in, in, on the planet. It's normal to go, you know, instead of going to God. Right? Amen. The man of God said, hey, you shouldn't do this. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to listen to the captain of the ship. Which is logical, right? Who wouldn't? Right? If I came to you and said, hey man, we shouldn't get on the ship. It's not safe. And the captain of the ship, who's like, you know, the captain, says, uh, yeah, he don't know what he's talking about. He's never piloted a boat in his life. I've got this. You're like, yeah, he's got this. It's logical. But sometimes the spirit doesn't coincide with logic. Sometimes the spirit is telling you, hey, you need to go this direction. You need to do this thing. You need to right. obey. You need to walk it out. I know it doesn't make sense. I know it's not logical. I know that one person shouldn't be able to, 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 to overcome an army, but, but he does. I know that one, one little kid that's 17 years old shouldn't be able to fight a giant that's nine foot nine and, and defeat him. That, that's, that's not logical. I know that a, a little shepherd boy shouldn't be able to defeat a lion and a bear while he's protecting the sheep. That's not logical. But sometimes, church, sometimes the spirit is leading you to do something that logic is like, that don't make no sense. So in, in this, if you find yourself in a storm, it could be, it could be that you're believing the master and the owner of the ship. You're believing that the flesh, you're believing logic, you're believing education, you're believing man's wisdom, you're believing your current revelation, and you're not being led by the spirit. Let me, let me go further into that. Are you teachable? Do you have a teachable spirit? I've spoke to so many people. Uh, deans of theology, all these different things that we've had our debates. And the key thing to them not receiving what I'm preaching is they, they stopped being teachable. They stopped having a heart that longs to know more about God. See, if I can come to you and tell you, hey, the, the scripture proves something and prove it. And you're like, I've had people tell me this. That's not what my church says. That's not what I, I grew up believing. That's not what I. And so the, the, they, they put a hold on God. Right. They, they can't be taught anymore. They can't be shown anymore. There's a lot of people that, that say they can. They, they talk about healing, but they don't lay hands on anybody. Right? God wants to show them. Talk about the prophetic, but they won't prophesy to anyone. Talk about casting out devils, but they won't even try to lay hands on anyone. And God has, has been drawing them and calling them to give them more knowledge and more understanding and more revelation and a more anointing to do the things that He's called us to do. But we stay in a comfort zone. We stay in our place because we don't want to be teachable. Are you willing to grow this morning? Are you willing to be led? See, these people were not be, were not willing 
to be led by a man of God. They wanted to be led by the ship's captain. And they found themselves in a storm because of it. I, I can't press that enough, church. Sometimes we're leading. Uh, you respect this person because of their knowledge. You respect this person because of their education. You respect this person because, you know, they have everything together. But are they spirit led? How, are they prayed up? Are they fasted? Is everything that's coming out of their mouth something God would say? Ouch, that one hurt, right? If you've been listening to some gossip from somebody that seems to have it all together. They don't, church. Are you teachable? Can God correct you and you say, yes, Lord? Are you willing to be teachable, willing to grow, and willing to be led spiritually? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Go to verse 12. And I'm, I'm just going to generalize that. It says that because the heaven was not uh, commodious in the winter, it's talking about, it's talking about being uncomfortable it's not comfortable for the season. The, what, what season's coming, it's not going to be comfortable. So they said, you know what, we better leave because it's going to be a little uncomfortable. They put themselves in a storm because they were a little uncomfortable. Y'all feel it? Y'all read it? Y'all hear it? They, they, put, they put themselves in a position to go through a storm, to lose the boat, to lose their lives almost, just because if they stayed where they were at, they were going to be uncomfortable. Church, sometimes God allow you to be in a place that's uncomfortable, that's strange. You know what I mean? When I first came to to a church that was spirit filled, it shocked me. I was kind of tripping. You know, people were spinning over here, crying over there, laughing over there, dancing over there. One laid out, and another one just falling back. I was like, "What's going on?" You know, I I grew up in a church where if you just, if, hey mom, you ain't got a pinch. Oh, you can't say nothing. You got people yelling. Right? It was uncomfortable. I walked into church and I'm like, this guy invited me to church and I was like, hey, how come? He's like, whoa. What did I get myself? And maybe y'all came in here like, it's a little different. You might be uncomfortable, right? And, and every spirit in you, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, every new devil in you. He says, leave. Run. These people are crazy. They will lay hands on you and all of a sudden you won't hear me no more. Oh. <laughs> right? Sometimes you'll, you'll be in an uncomfortable place and want to leave, want to get up, want to get out. You'll be hearing a word and everything that itching in you, all of a sudden you got to pee five times. Right? We're like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. No, you don't. That's that. Yeah, you, you want to leave because you don't want to hear it. Let's just be real, praise God. Or that spirit in you don't want to hear. God may have you stay somewhere outside of your comfort zone. And, and I'm sure people have said this. I don't want to go to church because Pastor Daniel always seems like he's talking about me. <laughs> right? I've, I've had people over the internet, man, it feels like you were talking to me. Let me help you. I'm not. He is. I'm not. I, 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 don't, I don't have a bone in like I got you today. You know that's not me. I, I don't do that. I don't. Uh, I don't try to harpoon people. But God has your number. Yes, He does. Amen. God has your number. God knows the the, the, the end from the beginning. He knows it all. He knows it all. Amen. And, and if, if it feels like I'm talking to you or I've been listening or opening up your mail or checking your emails or, or listening to conversations, I haven't. <laughs> Sometimes he shows me. You can ask my son. He'll show, he'll show you. He'll show me exactly what you've been doing. Like you were doing this, you were doing this. Give me. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Don't put me on blast like that, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know your life, but he does. And, and, and sometimes he'll take a weird pastor like me and just sound a trumpet. Stop. Hold on. Pray. Repent. Read your word. All that's that nugget that my wife gave this morning. If you didn't receive all that and didn't hear all that, you need to, uh, we didn't record it. I'm sorry. Man. But uh, rewind the Lord. Just bring it back to memory because that all that was gold. If, if I had gold out here, I, I mean, 
How many picked it? Don't raise your hand. How many picked it up? How many picked up? I call it the nugget because it's gold. And sometimes we don't, we're not ready to receive a word of God. We're, we're not in that, in that place yet mentally or, or maybe you're just a little uncomfortable and I didn't wake up on the wrong side of the, anyway. You know where that came from. But it's not me who's talking about you. It's him. It's a warning. And he may be warning you and saying, church, a storm is coming. There's something on the horizon. You don't see it. Everything looks great. You're, you're dancing through the tulips right now and, and, you know, prancing over rainbows and riding unicorns and all that good stuff. Great. But there's something on the horizon. I need you to get into prayer. Have you ever had that check? God wake you up right in the middle of the night and be like, um, you know, pray. You're like, why? Uh, tomorrow at nine, I'll pray, Lord. Wow. Wow. There were several times yesterday I couldn't shake it. I couldn't shake it. I got into prayer multiple times yesterday and I still don't know why. I know the Spirit of God led me. I know, I know the Holy Ghost as I was praying in the Holy Ghost. Something shifted because whatever was in the atmosphere was gone. And sometimes we, God is, is yelling at us at night, wake up. We're like, not now. Church, I, I, I'm here to bring it to light, church, not to condemn you, but to convict you into hearing the voice of God or hearing the man of God or hearing the word of God or hearing the message and, and applying it to your life. And sometimes there is a shift and the Lord knows what's on the horizon. The Lord knows what's coming and he's trying to prepare you so that you don't lose the ship. You don't lose everything in the ship and you don't possibly lose your life. Yeah. And it's a warning sometimes. Are you listening? Are you listening? Uh, and if you are listening, who are you listening to? Because they weren't listening to Paul. They were listening to the, the master and the owner of the ship. Who are you listening to this morning? It's possible you might find yourself in a storm because you didn't listen. Amen. Have you ever found yourself in there for not listening? In the storm. I found myself in the storm because I didn't listen. I didn't stop. My brakes weren't that good. Amen. Well, maybe this morning you say, well, pastor, I've already missed it. I'm in the storm now. Now what? I'm glad you asked. Go to verse uh, 18. And in verse 18, it says, and when, and we be exceedingly tossed with a tempest when you're going through it. The next day they lightened the ship. They lighten the ship. See, usually this happens. They're lighting the ship when there's water getting in the ship. They got to make it lighter so that it can, its buoyancy can be a little higher so that water don't get in the ship and sink it so fast. So they begin to lighten the ship. They were sinking. I believe this morning the Lord is telling us, you've got to drop your baggage. It's time to start getting rid of some stuff and lighten your ship. It's time to get rid of your baggage, church. And some of us have been walking around like this all day, every day. Right? Praise the Lord. How you doing? Come on. Hold on, let me get my baggage. Hold on, okay. I'm ready now. Hallelujah. Right? And going to work. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm good. Are you sure? Uh -huh. I'm good. <laughs> you got all your baggage. You're like, I'm, I'm, I'm real good. Uh, what are you talking about? No, I'm fine. Uh, what? What? You know, you're hitting people with your baggage. <laughs> right? Excuse me, sorry, 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 excuse me, sorry. And you got, how many have ever hit somebody with your baggage? <laughs> I remember a long time ago when I first got in the professional world, that they wrote, write something on this paper and I wrote my problems, right? My problems, my issues, my baggage. He goes, all right, put it in this paper bag. He goes, roll it up. 
I was like, okay, what do I do with it? He goes, go put it on the curb. And if you want your problems when you when you get out of work, go ahead and pick them up and take them with you. But leave them there on the curb when you get there. I was like, that's just me. You know, I was like, so hurt and offended, you know. But if you got that kind of baggage, you leave that outside. No. This is where it's, this is where your baggage goes right here. Take that. That's all. Awesome. Hallelujah. Some of us have been walking around carrying baggage, and I, I got a question for you. How many of you are still carrying something? And so when I began to study up on deliverance and those things that we've carried since birth and generational, I've learned a whole lot of things about generational baggage. Amen. There was, there was baggage in my life that I didn't know I was carrying. There was things in my life that came to light that I was like, that was there? Wow. Right? And then, I, I've been serving God since 99. And I still had baggage. I served him 10 years, still had baggage. I served him 15 years, still had baggage. I went on 20 years and still had baggage. See, see, church, coming in here and sometimes doesn't get rid of all of your baggage. Just coming in, like coming to church doesn't make you a Christian, doesn't make you completely free. That's like, just because you're a Taco Villa doesn't make you a Taco. It, it's, more, it's more than that. You, you might still have some baggage this morning is what I'm saying. Yeah. I pray that all of you are free. Completely delivered. And if you need a devil cast out, we'll do it right here, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. And if there's some kind of baggage that you're just, you, one of the things is you got to be like, you got to quit hiding in church. Right? I'm okay. What? What baggage? What? What are you talking about? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, nothing bothers me. Right? You got all that baggage behind you. It looks like you have a big hotel. <laughs> You got baggage. You got baggage, church. We've got baggage. And some of us need deliverance. Tell your neighbor, drop your baggage. Now tell your other neighbor, yeah, you got baggage too. Drop it. Just drop it. Drop your baggage this morning. Hallelujah. Now here's, here's, here's the funny thing about it. Some of us have dropped bags, right? We dropped all our baggage. We, whoo. Thank you, Jesus, I'm free. And then you're walking along and you're like, ooh, that's a nice bag. <laughs> what? Is that a Louis? Oh my goodness. Michael Cord, oh, let me think. And all of a sudden you start picking up more bags and the Lord's like, what are you doing? I know that looks designer baggage, but it's still baggage. <laughs> Have you picked up some new baggage this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Dro drop all the bags. All of it. But it's coach. But it's a, I don't know, coach and mom. It's all that. Right? I've got a satchel, my man bag, for my Bible and my stuff. My purse, my man purse. Um, maybe. No matter what you dress it up as, you still got some bags. Some men, y'all got bags. All the women are like, leave my bags alone. Man, y'all got some baggage. Yeah. Right? It might be a big old fat wallet full of just mess, but it's you got baggage. Right? You got your backpack and your whatever else. You got baggage too. Hallelujah. Verse 20. And it says, And when the sun, and when there was neither sun nor stars for many days, uh, there, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Church, they dropped all their baggage and still were in darkness. The enemy would like you to believe there's no salvation, there's no hope. I've been, I've been in a place where I'm in utter despair that it looks like there's no salvation out of this. There's no way I can get out of this. There's no, I can't see no light at the end of the tunnel. It's completely black. There's no stars, there's no moon, there's no nothing. I can't see anything. It's just darkness in front of my face. Have you ever been there? And how many know the Lord shows up on time every 
different. Hallelujah. They've lost all hope. There's no end in sight. And then verse 21. I love this part because it justified my I told you so's. Watch this. Verse 21 says, But after long absence, Paul stood forth and said, In the midst of them, sirs, if you would have hearkened unto me, if you would have just listened to me, I told you. So, biblical, I told you so. All the wives are like, oh, I'm taking that one home right there. <laughs> I told you so. It was in the Bible. I saw it. Paul said it. He said, If you would have hearkened unto me and have not loosed from Crete to have to have gained this harm and loss. Amen. And then, but, but verse 22, here's what I love about it. See, once you tell them, tell them, I told you so, you can't leave it there. But now I exhort you to be of good cheer. There shall be no loss of, of any man's life among you. Just the ship. Just the ship. Just the baggage. Just the stuff. I'm going to save you. And God wants to save you this morning. He wants to save you, and, and, and if all he does is just save you, and you lose all your baggage, that's exactly what it was designed for. It was designed so that you could lose all your baggage. I know that you, you know, I've heard some people say, my hate keeps me warm. Guess what? It might. But if you lose it, and allow the Lord to heal you, and lose all your baggage, you won't live in such a hateful place. You won't live in such a bitter place. You won't live in such an angry place. Just let God kill that baggage. Let, let, if God wrecks your ship, and God may have wrecked your ship here recently, or maybe this morning God is wrecking your ship as I'm speaking. Like, Lord, I, I, don't, don't show him anymore, Lord. You've been speaking to me all morning. He may be wrecking your ship right now, and here's what the Lord wants to tell you. He goes, I'm just trying to get you to loose all your baggage. I want to save you. I want your baggage to fall to the side. I want all these things to fall to the side. And all I want is for you to be saved without baggage, completely free Amen. from all. Have you ever felt weighted? Just all kinds of weight burdened on your shoulder and stressed and, and anxious and, and frustrated. That's baggage, church. The, the Lord said the battle is mine. If it's his, what are you freaking out about? It's his. He said the battle is mine. Go to, go to the next chapter, uh, chapter 28. And I've got a few scriptures and we'll come to a close. In verse 28, verse 1 says that when, when they were escaped, all right, so, so they, they crash, they wreck, they're in the water, they're swimming, and when they were escaped, they knew that, they, that the island of Melita and the barbarous people showed, no, showed us no little kindness for they kindled the fire and received every one of us because of the present rain and because of the cold. Verse 3. And when Paul had gathered, gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came out a viper out of the heat and fastened to his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer <coughs> who Though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when, when he should have swollen and fallen down uh, dead suddenly. But after that they had looked a great while and saw no harm to come, they changed their minds and said he was a God. The fire depicts. So he, Paul gets on this, on this, uh, on this shore. And these people see all, all the shipwreck and people coming to the shore. Remember, nobody, nobody's dying. Nobody's life is lost. And they build a fire for him because it's cold and it's raining. And all of a sudden, uh, Paul he goes and gets some sticks so he can feed the fire. And, uh, and the fire depicts the presence of God, the spirit of God. And all of a sudden, a snake comes out and bites him. And that snake, the snakes always depict the demonic. Amen. See, the demonic can't stand the presence of God. The demonic can't stand the fire of God. When you have a fire shoved up in your bones, it's very rarely that you're going to stay uh, bound and with chains. 
and with, with strongholds in your life. If you, if you have a fire inside you, a, a, a fresh word all the time, and a red hot, uh, uh, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you have that fervent prayer, that, that, that fervent worship, that, that red hot service to the Lord, enemies don't like that, that atmosphere. Snakes don't like that atmosphere. And, and, and all of a sudden, he starts to throw sticks into the fire and he gets bit. And it says it was fastened to his hand. And the hand usually depicts power or strength. And then what the, what the Lord began to tell me here is a snake will try to fasten to your hand to affect and contaminate your blood. To affect and contaminate your strength. To affect and contaminate your power. How many know that wounded people... Wound people. Hurt people hurt people. Right? And you got people from pulpits hurting people because they were hurt and they never dealt with their demons. They never repented. They, they still have snakes attached. They still are carrying baggage and they're carrying all that baggage and slinging it at the congregation. Men of God, if you're listening to this behind pulpits, you need deliverance too. You got baggage too. You may have a snake attached to your hand too. And you may have thought you shook it off into the fire, but it's still attached. And the Lord is telling you this morning that, 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 that something may have attached itself a long time ago. And you never shook it off in the fire. You just got comfortable with the pain. Have you ever lived with pain? Like, you know, hurt yourself and you've lived with it for a while. That's the same thing, living with snakes, living with demons, living. You just get used to it and you start living and you, you're okay with the bitterness and you're okay with the frustration and you're okay with the, with the unforgiveness and you're, oh, you're fine with it. You're okay with a hard heart and never having friends and never talking to people and being an introvert. You're okay with all that. Why? You have snakes. You have baggage. And you never dealt with them. He's, the, the verse 5 says he shook, he shook the beast off into the fire. Let me back up to verse 4. I want to point something out. That uh, Verse 4 says the, 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 the barbarian said he's a murderer. And he's probably going to die. The, the sea didn't get him, but the snake will. Because he's a murderer. Guess what church he was? This was... Paul, Apostle Paul, that used to be Saul of Tarsus, that used to go after and kill Christians. He was a murderer. And then they say, this is happening because he deserves it in verse 4. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom he thought he escaped from the sea, but yet the vengeance suffered not to live. Vengeance, he deserves it. Let, let me let you in on something, church. If you're the body of Christ... We don't sit there and watch people die. Amen. There's too many people in churches just watching going, man, brother fell. Let me watch the, you know, you know how you rubberneck when a wreck happens, you're all, and you almost get a wreck yourself. That's happening in church so many times. There, there's nobody hitting their knees and lifting that brother up or, or that sister up or, or encouraging that brother and say, man, I know you fell. That's all, I know you fell. I'm not going to condone your, your failure, but guess what? Get up. Get up. Come on up. Let, let me strengthen you. Let me pray for you. Let me help you back up. Let me, let, let's get you restored in the name of Jesus. Don't be like the barbarian. That's a fool. He deserved that. Watch him die. Watch him die. Watch him die. That happens so much in the church today. Just watch him die. He deserves it. Watch him die. We all deserve judgment, church. We have all come short and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all fallen short. We all deserve judgment and God's mercy. And His grace is sufficient for all of us. Amen. 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 Don't be a barbarian. Look at your neighbor and say, quit being a barbarian. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm not calling her that. You call her that. I saw that. Verse 5 says, He shook off the beast into the fire. Come on, church. Don't let it stay attached. Don't let it stay attached. Drop it. Shake it off. Yeah. Shake it off. Never mind. No, shake it off. <laughs> Drop it in the fire. I got a question. Are you walking around with baggage or a bunch of snakes on you? What baggage are you carrying? What snakes are you carrying? Are you carrying 
rejection? Are you carrying offense? Are you carrying bitterness, fear, and anxiety? If any of this lands, church, I want, I want you, don't, don't just brush it across and don't be like, he's talking about me again. Right? Drop the baggage. Are you carrying rejection? Are you carrying offense? Are you carrying bitterness? Are you carrying fear or anxiety? Are you carrying lust and addiction? Are you carrying pride and selfishness? Are you carrying a bunch of excuses? Are you go carrying gossip? Speaking or listening to? I don't say nothing. I just listen. I love to listen. Right? Are you carrying rebellion and infirmity? Are you carrying pa the past? Hurt? Was that a... <clears throat> Get her. Get him. That's what it sounded like. <clears throat> Are you carrying uh, rebellion in your heart? You're just, just trying to rebel, contradict all the time. Are you carrying infirmity, past hurt, unforgiveness? Some of us are carrying religion. We picked that's a that's a new baggage we picked up. That's some new stuff, that, that, that man-made tradition. Well, this is what I are you carrying that new bag? Is it still attached? Are you still dealing with these things this morning, church? Amen. The Lord has called you here to drop all your baggage. Don't carry it to drop it in the fire. God is drawing you closer and closer and closer to Him. And as you get closer to the fires, the snakes want to leave. This morning, I'm calling you to draw near to the living God. Draw near to Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. God is calling you today. Today is the day of salvation, church. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to drop your baggage. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day that you get set free. Today is the day. Acts 22, 16 says, Why tarriest thou? Where today is... Baptism Sunday, and the Bible says, Why tarriest thou arise and be baptized? It's saying, What are you waiting for? Acts 22 16. It says, What are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized. Amen. Today is the day. Don't put it off, church. Don't put off repentance. Don't put off dropping your baggage. Don't put off deliverance. Don't put off uh, a baptism in Jesus' name. Don't put off any of this. This is what God is calling us to. He's, he's made me or asked me or told me to preach this message so that you can come face to face with yourself and say, Lord, it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of salvation. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of, of deliverance. It's me, O oh Lord, that has baggage and has snakes that I thought I had gotten rid of, but they're still attached because you showed. How many, don't raise your hand, how many of the Lord showed you this morning that there's still some baggage you have to drop, that there's still some snakes that you thought you got rid of, but they're kind of still attached. And maybe there's a fang just still in there. Something is still attached that you haven't got completely free from. And the Lord wanted to expose the enemy this morning because the, the devil works under darkness. And as long as he can stay in darkness and stay hiding, he can stay where he's at. But as soon as he's exposed, it's time for him to leave. Amen. And God is shining a light right now on your hearts and on your minds and on your intentions and everything. So that not, not for condemnation, church, the devil is a liar. It's for conviction to bring you to repentance. Hallelujah. As we read earlier in Acts 2.38, it says, Maybe some of you are like this. He said, and many, and many of them were pricked in their hearts. And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And this is a promise unto you and all your children, all that are far off, as many as the Lord shall call. Amen. This is a promise. Calling to repentance, calling to, to leave it at the altar, calling to leave it at the foot of the cross. Or as our, our shirt saying, everybody that's getting baptized today, we've got a shirt for you. It says, I left it all in the water. Amen. We, we read that scripture that says we are buried with him in baptism. We're going to bury the old man today. And we're going to raise a new life, a new creation, a new creature, a regenerated body. In Jesus' name, let's stand. So this morning, whether you're getting baptized or not, I would like everyone to pray this prayer of repentance with me. All right?